Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO set review from Rick by Rick, and today we have set number 75958. This is the LEGO Harry Potter Bow Batons Carriage Arrival at Hogwarts, containing 430 pieces and retailing for $50 in the United States. So it contains four minifigures, of which all are exclusive, and uh, it does have one instruction booklet, as you'd kind of expect. Uh, and you can see in the back of this instruction booklet... Uh, that, you know, there are actually no ads, which is odd for a Harry Potter set. Uh, but this was released as part of the 2019 wave, um, alongside a handful of other sets that were mostly based on the Goblet of Fire and Prisoner of Azkaban. And this one obviously is based on Prisoner of Azkaban. And this is actually the first time that we've seen um, this thing appear in LEGO form. Uh, they did not do this in the older Harry Potter sets. Uh, you know, came out when the movies uh, did. Um, so, you know, it's kind of cool to get something a little different. And the build of the set is entirely dedicated to the carriage. Um, obviously, you have the handful of figures, um, but, you know, the only thing that is not attached to anybody uh, is this bottle. I don't know what this bottle is supposed to be, but they include a bottle, so, you know, uh, it exists. And I guess you could just throw it inside the carriage if you wanted to. Uh, but, this is what we've got in the set. Uh, first thing that you'll notice if you're familiar with what this vehicle is supposed to look like uh, is that there are only two um, of these flying horses. Uh, I believe that they're supposed to be Abra Abra or Abraxans. I don't know what the difference is between that and like, just a Pegasus, but that's what the internet told me. So, you know. Um, but yeah, there are two of them here. I'm going to remove them for most of this video, just because it's easier uh, to do so, but um, removing them from the carriage does allow me to tell you that uh, they do include this extra 1x2 plate for each of the horses, uh, so you can just pull the wings you know, out and actually have it look just like a, I guess, Abrax or Abrax. I don't know how you say that either. But uh, yeah, this, you know, is pretty normal. I believe this is the same exact printing that they used for silver. Uh, from the Lone Ranger, um, but, you know, I, I guess it works. It's not anything too particularly uh, special. could be slightly updated, but it looks definitely similar, at least at first glance. I guess Brickset gives it a new uh, part ID. But uh, you can flap the wings, uh, and you actually do sort of have to, because having the two wingspans next to each other does not quite work. But, you know, you can see that they're attached pretty simply, and it can... Uh, their section can turn side to side and move up and down. So I guess you know while we while we still have one here that we can reattach, you can um, sort of pose them if you were to put something underneath them uh, to make it look like they're taking off. Um, so you know that's kind of cool. I guess I put those wings on backwards. Uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, so you can just remove this too if you want to. Uh, you know I don't know. I guess display the carriage without anything attached to it. Um, but, you know, that does make it easier for me to maneuver this around the screen, so I guess we'll do it. Obviously, the front axle can turn. Uh, these wagon wheels in gold are kind of nice. I don't know that they're exclusive. Uh, I think they are, uh, unless, you know, they existed in with an older part ID. Um, you know, I haven't seen them before, at least. That's for sure. Uh, and, you know, just overall, looking at this, I think it looks good. Um, you know, it's pretty respectable looking compared to... Uh, his on-screen counterpart, and I do like the stickers, and overall just this, uh, you know, medium blue color, I just think works for this, uh, you know, I, I, I like it. Uh, the door on this side can open, uh, it's a little bit blocked, because this is not the side that's supposed to open, um, you, know, you actually uh, can enter it from this side, uh, it just has that to look like it has an additional entrance, uh, but... You know, you can sort of see the interior there. Um, it's got that drawer thing on the back. Um, we'll see the interior better in just a second. But first, I just want to quickly look at the exterior details. I like these front walls that are kind of hinged in. You can move them in and out a little bit, but the roof is attached to stop them. Uh, we got these uh, bits that are angled out to the side. You could place a figure there if you wanted it to look like someone is uh, flying the horses. Uh, Madame Maxime actually does fit, uh, even though she's kind of a weird shape. Uh... And, you know, you got the four lanterns, uh, 
turning it around the other side, there is this chest at the back, and the chest contains three teacups, so everyone in the set can have tea. Uh, there is also an extra teacup included, but you'll see there's another one in another place later, so we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but in order to access the interior of this vehicle, first you're going to remove the roof, and that's not going to give you any access to the interior, because the interior of the set is a little bit different. Uh, so what you do, uh, this is meant to represent, you know, what the actual interior, uh, you know, in-universe uh, is like, where it's larger on the inside than it is on the outside. So, you know, uh, what they've done to replicate that is make it so that you actually have more interior space than is possible with, uh, you know, the actual physical space occupied by the x the vehicle. So you kind of can get a second story here. And you can place a figure in here on like a little chair. You got this table which can be removed. Uh, and it's pretty pretty simple, but you know, I guess a little bit more complex than it had to be because it uses this uh, one by 2 rounded plate and this 2x2 two two, um, tile with a single stud in the center just to kind of make it look like it has legs. Uh, but that gives you a fourth teacup and a teapot. And you can just place that on the center. You could remove it from this thing as well. Uh, but yeah, you are able to place figures on the interior. Uh, you can have people up here too. Uh, I guess not like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting that uh, you know it works out this way. I don't think it looks particularly good or particularly displayable here, but I think that it is a interesting effort, and it definitely does, you know, show that the designers did try to uh, make this as fun as possible. Uh, and from the interior, you know, mostly the colors look pretty good. Uh, it's just that these uh, one by 2 bricks with two studs on the other side that hold on those shield tiles uh, don't exist in medium blue, and they couldn't recolor them. You can't see them at all from the outside, but from the inside, they're a little bit obvious. And neither of these drawers have anything in them, but you can remove them. Uh, and, you know, they're cool pieces, at least, uh, in that color. I don't know... I don't know that those are new, but I haven't seen them before either. Uh, but yeah, if you want to close this back up, you can leave uh, figures inside and, you know, let the roof fall off and put it back on. And obviously, you know, your figures will fit. Obviously, you can't really leave them up here. Um, you know, they would be standing there. But, you know, uh, for what it is, I think that uh, they definitely got a good amount of play value and stuff into this vehicle. First up for figures, we have Flor Delacour and her sister, Gabriella Delacour, and they have this new hair hat combo piece, um, meant to, you know, represent the hats that they wear in their school uniforms, and, you know, it's the same piece between the two of them, but I think that that's perfectly fine, perfectly appropriate, like, that's what it should look like, so, you know, I don't mind that they, uh, reused it, and I, I, honestly, I guess this is Harry Potter, so maybe I would have expected it, but... You know, for normal other themes, I don't, I wouldn't have even expected a dual molded uh, hair hat combo piece. So it's kind of an improvement. They get the same torso print as well, uh, and uh, Floor gets a new uh, dual molding uh, for her legs, which looks really good. Um, you know, oh, I mean, honestly, I really like the Floor figure, uh, and you know, the Gabriella one's not bad. Uh, it's just that the uh, face is a little bit, um, you know more common, I think. Uh, she does have... Maybe it isn't. She does have the sleeping eyes. Is that new? The front face definitely looks like something we've seen before. But, uh, Flora also gets a new facial expression. Um, you know, I believe it, it was reused in the clock tower, uh, but, you know, uh, it's definitely way better than reusing the Ellie face from Jurassic World, like the one in the Triwizard Champion set, or the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard set. Um, did. So, you know, both these are pretty good figures. And they both get their wands, uh, and Gabriella also gets a letter printed on tan, which is a little bit less common than the white one, I think. The other two figures that we have here are Madame Maxime and Hagrid in his Yule Ball attire, and again, both of these figures are exclusive to this set. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're both pretty well done. Hagrid's uh, hair and face print are the same thing that we've seen in other sets, but he does get a new a print for his torso, as well as the fact that this is the only set that has it molded in reddish brown, so his arms are also exclusive here. Uh, he has the two little paddles that he uses to, uh, you know, direct the carriage to landing, which I think is a nice, you know, accessory for him. Uh, Madame Maxime has good printing on uh, the back of her torso and the back of her dress slope piece. Uh, nice to see. It looks a little bit plain around the sides, because there is so much surface there, but, you know, she is designed to be taller than, you know, your normal figure. Uh, and, you know, She's a little bit taller than Hagrid, too, even. 
Uh, but yeah, her torso and leg print are pretty good. Basically just carries that same kind of, I don't know, I don't know what to call that really, but that same like pattern throughout the whole thing. And she does get two facial expressions and, you know, both of them are pretty decent. That is the same headpiece though that she uh, uses in the clock tower set. So, you know, I don't think that's a problem either. Uh, just pointing it out. Uh, but yeah, I think both of these are pretty good figures as well. Um, Hagrid will go well with the clock tower set. Um, and, you know, I think my favorites in the set though are still uh, Flora and Gabriella. And yeah, overall, I think that, you know, this set is okay um, for the price. I think the biggest thing holding it back is that it's not the most recognizable thing in all of the Harry Potter universe, and the value is not as good as other Harry Potter sets that were released around the same time. Like, I don't think $50 is ridiculous, but this does feel more like a $40 set. I think the figure selection is pretty good, though, again, none of these characters are super duper important, so I don't think that any of these figures are like extremely desirable. Obviously, I think the exception to that being uh, the new Florida to the core. Um, I think she is a pretty great figure and kind of a big draw to the set. Um, you know, Hagrid in the Yule Ball uh, attire is cool, but it's not like something that I think every person ever needs. Uh, I guess Madame Max seems kind of cool too, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that for Harry Potter fans uh, who want to have everything Harry Potter, I think that they will be satisfied with this because it provides a relatively obscure-ish vehicle um, to them uh, for the first time. And I think that, you know, if th that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a Wobbaton's carrot, this is probably the best you'll ever get. I think that it is well done. And you probably could buy more of these uh, Abraxans um, and, you know, fill this out with a full team of them. Uh, and, you know, that in particular doesn't bother me that much with this head because you know to add in like four more horses and have to charge like twenty dollars more and I don't think it would feel like that much more value. So, you know, I I'm okay with that compromise. Um as I am with, you know, most kind of stagecoach compromises where they have to reduce the amount of things that they can put in front pulling it. Um no, I mean I don't have too many props with this. I probably would not have paid fifty dollars for it myself, but for the price I paid for it I'm pretty happy with it and you know if you can get it on sale for I think 40 is okay but anything less than that I think is a good deal and this definitely does add a nice amount of color to a you know Harry Potter display um, so you know, overall I hope you guys enjoyed this little review if you did let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys all next time bye everyone